remembers anything. No one remembers it. What's this is a million little details. <laughs> Assuming the mat is not the mat, let's send you the mat. Excuse me, we're gonna send you the mat. We're gonna center it. I guess center it. You could have it actually like pretty close to the.
event show has just completed, and so we're going to begin the ceremony now. Um, the procession will be making their way in. Uh, just a final reminder to either turn off or turn off your cell phone or put it on airplane mode. We're not wanting it to be on the Wi-Fi. Um, and also uh, a reminder that no pictures during the ceremony. So I'm glad that you're all here and please enjoy. And maybe one last thing, if you're um, anyone who has a speaking role, if you're uh, in the mondo or making a statement, please speak as loudly as possible. We want to make sure we catch all the audio and everyone can hear what you have to say. Thank you. This gate is Shogaku's stone bridge. Donkeys cross and horses cross. The vast sky and the great earth cross. Warm heart and empty mind cross. Hell beings and Maras cross. Dharma protectors and devas cross. Now, this mixed up, patched, robed priest will cross. This great old bridge holds all. Years ago, this unwitting duckweed swept through these doors, not even seeing a gate in which to enter. Today, someone returns. Will he step inside? Can she step outside? Only Buddhas can cross this threshold. 
Hey, you, let's leap through together. Angela Nee, Chair of the Board of Directors of San Francisco Zen Center. Today we celebrate another important moment in the long history of San Francisco Zen Center. The Mountain Seat Stepping Up Ceremony for Doshin Makoboko as the new abiding abbot of City Center and Drew Ruchman Beiler as the new abiding abbot of Green Gulch Farm. Doshi Makovoko, your many years of practice 
as a community member, resident, administrative leader of Tassajara, a priest, a teacher, and most recently as head teacher at Austin Zen Center will be a tremendous gift to the whole community. Your commitment to service as a priest and teacher inspires all of us and will serve the community in countless ways. Your passion for creating community and cultivating an open and diverse environment where all people feel seen and supported is essential to the long-term health and well-being of the Zen Center. Mako, because of your devotion to the Buddha way, to teaching, and to this great institution and its future, the board of directors and the entire Sangha invite you to assume the position of abiding abbot at Beginner's Mind Temple here in San Francisco. We do so with great confidence, but also with deep gratitude for your willingness to serve and ascend this mountain. You have our wholehearted support. May you be successful in all that you set out to do. Juyu Rushman Byler, your many years as a resident, an administrative leader of Zen Center, a priest, a teacher, and most recently as Tonto for Green Gulch Farms will be a tremendous gift to the whole community. Your dedication not only to your practice, but to offering and enriching the Zen practice of those near and far to you, including the San Quentin Sangha, the Montaña del Silencio Sangha in Colombia. Your commitment to service as a priest and teacher inspires all of us and will serve the Zen Center community in countless ways. Juryu, because of your devotion to the Buddha way, to teaching and to this great institution its future, the board of directors and the entire Sangha invite you to assume the position of abiding abbot at Green Dragon Temple. We do so with great confidence, but also with great, deep gratitude for your willingness to serve and ascend this mountain. You have our wholehearted support. May you be successful in all that you set out to do. Shakya Muni Buddha, original teacher. Today I am not bowing to your accidental words, your 40 years of kind and helpful statements. Silent sage of the Shakyas, I am bowing today to your timeless Buddha body, to your upright Buddha spine your Buddha mudra beacon shining across continents, millennia, to right here and right now, illuminating our own Buddha body, our shared Buddha body, liberation body, truth body. This vast moment body offers fragrance now, bowing to itself.
Daigen Shuri Bosat, great protector of the practice principle, we need you here. Please shrink and multiply and enter into our bloodstreams. <coughs> Become billions of Daigen Shuri antibodies fighting off our greed, hate, and confusion. Become Daigen Shuri enzyme digesting our delusion into nutriment for path. Please become vast, earth spirit, and protect our temples from floods and fire, all calamity. And today, please protect the Dharma, most of all, from me. I offer fragrance and I bow here to our lineage of Buddha ancestors from the empty circle, Prajna Paramita, mother of the ancient Buddhas, through Shakyamuni and Mahapajapati, great founders of our order, through the whole wide roaring river of our Zen, Bodhidharma, Nan Tsongchi, Acharya Moshan Liauren Ehe Dogen Daiosho Acharya Egi Hakuryu Sojun Daiosho, the churning wild river of this lineage empties here into this authentic Dharma moment ocean, this empty circle where we all stand now again.
Shakamuni Butsu. These fragrant petals I offer to you. We are here right now because of you. Your silent sitting, your clear seeing, illuminating this ancient primordial path to liberation. Just this. A white rat snake hidden in a monk's bag, bringing teachings across a rough sea to the great eye dragon king, I humbly bow.
homage to Bodhidharma, listening to the breath of your teacher, honoring her request to you, bearing the Dharma across an ocean, mind like a wall, avowing karma, eyes burning emptiness through mountains, transmitting true nature to true nature. Homage to our ancestors, male and female, neither male nor female, each one emerging from the womb matrix of Prajna Paramita.
You knew that this would be a problem. Making a Zen center makes Zen be somewhere, and everyone gets so confused. Thank you anyway for risking it and passing on your problem. May our life reveal your compassion, great teacher, and may the warm, wise teaching of this school truly go on without end. Great, great grandfather, Shogaku Shinryu Daiosho, born of the same soil as my forebears, and leaving that land, planting seeds here, nurturing sprouts, harvesting truth, teaching us that to be just ourselves through and through is enough. How can I ever repay? your tremendous kindness. Not knowing how, still, with wholeness of body and mind, I proclaim, yes, I will.
me. The Shinmei have now entered the Hojo, where they are signing temple documents and inspecting the temple seals. Um, now is the time for a brief intermission. You can get up, stretch your legs, uh, use the restroom. Uh, there are additional restrooms on the second floor. Uh, when you hear a roll down on the dencho, the large bell in the basement, um, that means it's time to come back into the Buddha hall. So thank you.
but he put it up. I don't know if you heard this part. And somebody, who is a smart computer person, said,
with deep humility and gratitude, I receive this great field of happiness robe assembled and organized by our sewing teacher, Gengyoko Tim Wicks, and bearing countless stitches by Tim, Paula, and hands known and unknown to me, each one for refuge, expressing devotion, indeed, the Dharma itself. Once on the Tassajara Engawa, I caught a glimpse of Reverend Licha Tentori putting her okesa on. The miraculous power of the kashaya is mysterious and magnificent. Somehow, with that sight, I knew then I would one day sew my own. Today, 20 some years later, I feel the embrace of my lineage through those who taught me, Blanche Hartman, Maya Wender, Linda Gallian, and my first sewing instructor and friend, Roxy Moazami. I vow to cover heaven and earth and all beings with its sacred meaning.
Congratulations, Doshin san. I'd like to present a poem, a Zen poem, with which I'd like to congratulate uh, Mark uh, of this occasion. Yoshin Waisik in mind brought her Buddha's bowl here. Now she has settled in this place. The continuous practice of every day gets farther clarified and strengthened with no blurriness, never being neglected. The way mind, the bodhicitta, the Buddha body seeking mind, initially aroused tens of millions of times, reaches the peak of the mountain where the vow was initially made. Your Dharma banners flutter in the wind, praising your virtues. I wish you all the best as you continue your journey to take care of this Sangha. But please also take very good care of yourself as well. Congratulations. The Bodhisattva gift of fearlessness is a gift of protection and safety by which beings can live and can flourish free from fear. It is fearlessness that the world needs right now. And I can clearly see that it's your fearless practice that brought you here, to this precious moment in time, and to inspire the Sangha with the same fearlessness and courage you bring forth today. The mountain you are ascending is the endless mountain of Dharma and the clouds, the sun and the moon cannot touch it. How can you? And yet you climb and we are forever blessed that you bring forth the courage, wisdom and compassion to sit on this high peak, not just for our benefit but for the benefit of all beings. Dear Marco, you have come from afar to the city of steep hills to lead this Sangha into its bright future. And even though the mountain you have in front of you might feel at this time as high as Mount Sumeru, like a tiger entering the mountains, like a dragon entering the ocean, nothing can stop you now. Every step you take will be the step of a whole Sangha that is walking this path with you. Please, lead us with deep wisdom and radical compassion as we continue on this path of practice. The world is going through times of deep transformation and the San Francisco Zen Center relies on its leaders to guide this organization with clarity of vision, deep commitment to the Dharma and endless care and inclusion. I'm looking forward to working with you in deeply understanding what is needed not just to keep going, not just to move forward, but to really thrive as a community of practice. Because this suffering world needs us to do so, to make every effort to be strong and healthy in order to provide the balm of Buddha's teaching reaching far and wide in the ten directions. Your fearlessness and compassion brought you here. 
having accepted this great responsibility, please allow us to support you in taking care of this temple for the benefit of all beings. Marco, on behalf of the San Francisco Zen Center, nine vows of deep gratitude. Marco, dear friend, I'm grateful to have known you for a long time before either of us became Buddhist practitioners. It's been more than 25 years. We've been friends exploring tide pools and redwoods, remote, remote Mexican hot springs. And from the earliest years of our friendship, I've appreciated your intelligence, your spontaneity, and your laugh. We had a lot of laughs together. We lost touch for a little while when you moved into Zen Center. And a handful of years later, when I started on my own meditation journey, I'm so grateful for our early conversations. You, your openness, your pragmatism, your care invited me into Buddhist practice. You helped me see the way my practice already embodied the Buddha, Buddhism. And you deepened my understanding. You introduced me to Zen, which still informs my insight meditation practice. In the Theravada Buddhist tradition, the way of the elders, it's said that to bring a person to the Dharma is the act of a true spiritual friend, a priceless gift. And over the many years of our conversations and visits at Tassajara, Austin Zen Center, and here, I've been struck how this spontaneity and openness have matured into the deep capacity to meet each person, each situation, with sincerity, attention, discernment, and care. You've extended the gift of your practice to so many people over these years. I've seen you meet everything from forest fires to community challenges with integrity, courage, and compassion. I'm happy for this community here that you're offering your spiritual leadership. It takes courage to step into leadership of a Sangha at a time when so many spiritual communities across our country are challenged, recovering, reinventing themselves after the acute phase of COVID. So deep bows for taking this role at this time. And while it's impossible to repay the gift of the Dharma, please accept my continued support and love and friendship. As the Buddha said in his famous story of the acrobats, it's helpful for each of us to look to our own balance our own balance with mindfulness as a form of care for ourselves and others. And it's important for each of us to look to each other's well-being through kindness, upright behavior, and consideration. I trust I speak for all of your spiritual friends here, near, and far when I say that we will look to our own balance and offer you that kindness that consideration, and that care in return. Abbot, Doshin, Mako, it's a joy and privilege to support your abbacy, your spiritual leadership as a friend and member of the broader community.
White clouds have no mind, yet are attracted to mountains. Although this mountain appears impossibly, excruciatingly high, it abides in ease and endlessly flows. With the help of all of you, and the entire universe, I vow to investigate this mountain's walking with my whole being. It's for Shakyamuni Buddha, who with his whole practice of these words prevented war over limited resources. Ah, so happily we live without hate among those who hate. Among people who hate, we live without hate. Ah, so happily we live without affliction among those afflicted by defilements. Among afflicted people, we live without affliction. Ah, so happily we live without agitation among those agitated by the pursuit of sense pleasures. Among people who are agitated, we live without agitation. Well, we can see from history that the circumstances Violence and hatred and othering of any kind are always close at hand. But true peace originates within our own hearts and minds. May all beings throughout this and every world system realize that greed, hatred, and delusion are the true enemies of peace. Then, now, and for all time. To countless eons of Buddhas and ancestors, I humbly bow. From Shakyamuni Buddha to Bodhidharma, Ehe Dogen, Kazan Jogin, and the women and men who, through their contiguous practice, transmitted the light even and especially amidst oppressive feudal times. 
to Shinryu Suzuki, who gave himself so completely, showing us how to settle the self on the self, I humbly bow. And to the San Francisco Zen Center abbots and abbesses, for Zentatsu Baker's wherewithal and tenacity, for tension red, great care with sentient and insentient beings alike, for Sojin Mel's easy chuckle, and for making time to have lunch with me always, for Zoketsu Norman's everyday wisdom and straightforward wit, for Zenke Blanche's complete selfness, selflessness, devotion, and inconceivable joy, for Agent Linda's Zendo stories, and for teaching me what it means to plight my trough, for Yerushin Paul's warm-hearted, continuous practice and constant contact, for Yogan Steve's acceptance of all parts with steadfast gentleness, for Kiku Christina's ferocious embodied compassion, for Rinso Ed's deep dedication to these temples and for inspiring the practice of Dana Paramita in so many people. For Furyu Nancy's eloquence and commitment to diversifying the Sangha. And for Tenzin David Z. <laughs> for over 20 years of friendship and for having my back under both mundane and extraordinary circumstances, <laughs> I humbly bow. You are my teachers, my family, my bedrock, my blood. I offer this incense in gratitude to all the members of and donors to this temple and to all temples throughout space and time. Without your devotion, expressed in the wholehearted generous gifts of your time, talent, and treasure, I would not be standing here today. And for those of this great Sangha who have passed into the tender radiance of the heart of the Buddhas, we'll meet again in the place we go when we sit. To my Honshi, Ryushin Dragon Heart, thank you for your unbroken teaching and for your forbearance with this lunkhead of a student. I am forever grateful for the many opportunities I had to be with you from my first ever Dharma talk here in this room, my first Rohatsu, to the deep valley of Tassajara, where I was your Anja, Jisha, Shuso and Deshi, studying Dogen's teachings in the Hojo at your kitchen table 
And across this world, sitting in a darkened ashram cum zendo, bombarded by leftover music of a deserted wedding, to the streets of your hometown of Belfast. When I asked you about becoming a priest, you compared me to a drunken Brahmin. <laughs> You showed me the meaning of the name I took from my mother when I inadvertently smashed the glass candle at the start of the morning jindo. It's true grace. <laughs> and later, you gave me a new name, which I continuously aspire to live up to. May we continue to disport freely in the Dharma endlessly. Thank you. I want to also take this opportunity to thank a few of my many, many other teachers. To Tia, who I am forever grateful for, remembering that fat grin on your face when I was giving the way, my way seeking mind talk, first time ever, and talked about my suffering. It touched me beyond measure, inspiring my curiosity and further seeking. If not for the opportunity to study Nagarjuna with you that one summer, I doubt I would have taken up residency and eventually left home. <laughs> to Leslie, words cannot possibly express my love and gratitude for all of the years that I had at Tassajara with you. Thank you. To Gil, you probably have little idea just how much your steady and gentle teaching has encouraged me through troubled times. Thank you. And to Reb, swinging doors and circumstances may have kept us apart, but I hold you close in my heart. You are with me every day. And to each of you, I have so much to learn from you, now and forever. Thank you.
dragons, and elephants. Let us bring forth the Dharma. Give me your questions. We saw last night that this Sangha knows how to care for one another. We also may have learned that there are 108 most important things. Please, Roshi, how will you point to the heart of the matter? Pointing Thank you. Congratulations. Great, congratulations. What are we going to do about the whiteness of this institution? <laughs> this question is a question that we need to ask ourselves and then find out how to bring that into our activity. We call them all upon Samanta Bhadra, Bodhisattva. Find a way to express this Dharma for all bodies, <coughs> for all times. Congratulations. Great, congratulations. Look like from the top of the mountain. <laughs> How do you want to change it? Well, I would say it looks pretty white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Hero, rather than asking how do I want to change it, for a while. I want to be able to smell the, the fragrance, jump over the puddles, get my robes a little wet in the rain. And when the time comes to change, change happens. We ask ourselves what is needed every moment. What is needed in this moment? And it will come. We can't stop it. Congratulations. Great congratulations. How can we support the harmony of difference and equality, the coexistence of uniqueness and unity in this temple? With every breath that we take, we can inhale acceptance, exhale anything that's extra, and keep breathing it in and asking these questions. What is this? Who is this? And let go of anything extra. Over and over again, this will do it can't help but harmonize. Thank you for your question. You. Congratulations. Congratulations. What is the unborn deepest meaning of abiding?
allowing ourselves to drop straight through the floor and pop out on the other side of the universe. Outside this temple, and now you've returned. What have you brought with you from the dusty world outside this gate? Hopefully, there's a lot of things I've left behind. <laughs> I'm not talking about my ACL, <laughs> but I hope that. You know, I know that I'm bringing experiences that I can't even come, that I can't even recall right now, but they will emerge as I step forward. Don't know what they are, trust that they will happen, be awake for them when they do. Thank you. Congratulations. Great congratulations. There's been talk of this new generation of abbots that are young and not from the original generation. How will you ensure that the Dharma of this temple is compelling and relevant and really meets the needs of a new generation of practitioners while being in touch with tradition and those who have come before us. When I heard that our seniors would be leaving within the next year, two years, sometimes when people would say this, they would say it as if this was a good thing because it was going to make room for the next generation. And I have to admit that that was not the case for me. When I heard this, I cried. And I felt the loss, just thinking of how many years of practice, experience, and energy would not be like down the hall. I don't know if I'm. I don't think of myself as the next generation. I think um, David said it when he stepped up, like, you know, I'm over 50. <laughs> but yes, yes, next generation. <laughs> I do know it's a different, I come from a different generation. I come from the generation of, like, know, the breakfast club. <laughs> and I like, come from the 80s, <laughs> which, uh, you know, sadly, people in the generation after me look upon that generation and think that we really had it good. <laughs> we did. <laughs> to ensure that the next generation, the incoming generations, the younger generations, feel like they have a place here is top of my mind. Whether the, this a question of what is what is true welcoming is top of my mind, not in a I'm going to uh, set up the place in a way that's going to attract people. I think that doesn't that's well that's not my that's not my style. But in a true welcoming way of inquiry curiosity, playfulness, and respect. That's how we welcome the next generation. Congratulations. Great congratulations. <coughs>
This next statement is called The Backbone. And it's a, supposed to be my, uh, an expression of my understanding of Zen. I tried to write this statement. I thought about it. I thought about it. I thought about it some more. And I think I may have written something. But actually, what I really thought was, I can't write this statement down because I'd just be fabricating something. Really, what I wanted was to ask my students, what do you think the backbone of my Zen is? Because I can think about it, I can uh, prioritize some things over others. But really, how do I live? How do I show up? That said, I did ask a few people, <laughs> and they said, oh. <laughs> So this backbone, I turn to my backbone, the center of my body, like the center of a top spinning. It's constantly moving. It's ever changing. And yet there's a stillness there. In this case, the stillness comes around these questions of how do we live our daily life? What is most important for every situation that we step into? What is most true? And for me, what comes up is this curiosity turning to what's happening with this openness, this wonder, Find me the preconceptions and judgments that come up. Of course they do. We're human. Letting them go. Turning again. Welcoming everything. Welcoming whatever it is that is arising. Allowing it to be just as it is. And respecting it for what it is. To do this over and over and over with every single arising I think that's a good backbone to have. I think I'll settle with that for right now. Watashi no idai naru oji sama yarashiki Buddha. Thank you for sharing your hearty laugh, wide smile, and playful yet profound way. The gifts you have given us are beyond measure, especially the gift of your presence here today. Thank you too for always welcoming me at Rinsoin despite my continued failure to learn how to speak my own mother's tongue. Someday I will make the effort, hopefully in this lifetime. Until then, and beyond, may your good health and the health of your family continue. For those of you who don't know, I left Tassajara back uh, in, in uh, 2012. I had been there for 10 years. I uh, had a one-way ticket to Asia. I left not wanting to know what was next, like really not wanting to know. So when people said, would you do this, would you do that, no. <laughs> I don't want to know yet. Give me a little bit of time to not know. Somewhere along the way, the invitation came for me to go to Austin to become a co-tanto with my then partner at the Austin Zen Center. I didn't want to do it. 
I wanted to stay in Cambodia and help uh, Beth Goldring with her AIDS hospice project. But as things turned out, I did. I did go to Austin. And um, I have been in Austin for the past 10 years. And through so many joys and horrors and <laughs> struggles and triumphs, I grew roots there. It took me about four years before I felt like when I went back to Austin, that was home. Now I'm here. And I have to credit, actually credit Norman for one night, <laughs> one time at Tassajara, for years, I would take every opportunity when Norman would come to Tulsa High, I would have jokes on with him. And he would say, you know, you're in great stay. Stay. Stay at Tassajara. Many people said this. Stay at Tassajara as long as you can. Sometimes it's hard to, when you leave, it's hard to come back. Some of you are nodding. <laughs> <laughs> well, one time, uh, after I had been at Tassajara for, I don't know, maybe eight, nine years, I went to see Norman. And he said, you should leave Tassajara. <laughs> I said, in fact, you should leave Zen Center. And then, you know, go do something else. Go do something else for 10, 20 years. But when Zen Center asks you to come back, say yes. Come back. So I did. But I have to say that, like I had developed my roots in Austin, I feel like a plant that's been ripped from the ground. I'm not dead, <laughs> but my roots of like coming back to San Francisco, coming back to this community, it's the roots are still finding their nourishment. So they're still looking. I know they'll find their nourishment. <laughs> but I can feel like, where's that mycelia? <laughs> so please. Uh, I know that all of you here in San Francisco will help me, and I know that all of you in Austin are rooting for me as well, and I am rooting for you. Thank you. Years ago, when I was a graduate student in analytic philosophy, a friend gave me a copy of Zen Flesh, Zen Bones. I casually flipped through it and then summarily dismissed it out of hand as it made no sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> a few years later, I had moved to San Francisco and I was looking for a Buddhist Sangha to practice with. I had been meditating for years, but not in, this, in, the, uh, in a Buddhist tradition. I remember deliberately avoiding the Zen tradition because I couldn't bear the thought of koans at all. <laughs> Through years of training here, here at Tassajara and in Austin, my understanding is still regrettably shameful. That said, some koans have managed to work their way into my flesh and my bones. What follows is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Great Master Tozan was once asked by a monk, when cold or heat come our way, how are we to avoid them? The Master replied, why don't you proceed to the place where there is no heat or cold? The monk then asked, what is that place where there is no heat or cold? The Master answered, when it is cold, my Acharya, give yourself up to the cold. When it is hot, my Acharya, give yourself up to the heat. Dogen said, if this greatest cold does not penetrate into our bones, how will the fragrance of the plum blossoms pervade the entire universe? Today, I have these words. Although there is no escape and no person is born who does not grow old or weak or die, and the great way does not belong to, nor does it depend upon our directing ourselves towards or away, there is still something utterly sweet in Zhaozhou asking Matsu, 
How will I know if I don't try? Is there any place on this earth unaffected by climate change? Any population that is immune from disease? The easy answer to this koan, of course, is let the heat kill you. Let the cold kill you. But before we go there, can we rest in where we are? And sometimes where we are is actually the struggle. The no, I, this is not OK. Between knowing and knowing, and sorry, between knowing and not knowing lies boundless curiosity and a good measure of kindness. It is not another kind of knowing, like knowing the answer to a koan. We may very well exert ourselves to exhaustion until there is no other choice but to completely give over. And yeah, only then will we be able to feel the drum straight through our bones. So if you have a chance, let, the, let your bare feet freeze to the ngawa. Catching a glimpse of Hojo-san running late from the bathhouse may well be worth it. As a freshly beginning Zen student here, somehow I got the impression that I shouldn't try to learn any of the forms, unless I was specifically asked to or instructed to. So I purposefully made no effort to learn anything. <laughs> I also gathered that one of the primary practices was to just say hi to whatever was asked of me. <laughs> At some point, I ran into Blanche in the stairwell. She was holding a bell striker in her hand, and she said, you've been around a while. Would you be Doan for the rest of the day? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I said. Needless to say, I made such a mess of things that the head monk sat glaring at me for the next whole period of zazen as I sat resolutely facing out into the zendo. <laughs> Something only abbots or tantos are authorized to do. <laughs> Needless to say, service was a mess. However, today, even though I still have that spirit, I think. <laughs> I think I've learned a couple things along the way these last years. My saying yes this time around, may it go more smoothly. <laughs> we are all, all of us, in this together. I look forward to practicing here with you. Thank you all for sitting so patiently for so long. There are so many people to thank, and I, I want to be quick. But I, uh, I, my apologies for however long this takes. <laughs> <laughs>
I want to really thank the, the Sangha here, the students, the residents, the staff, especially the Eno and the Tenzo, the kitchen crew, the Shika crew, general labor, and all the many volunteers who work so long and so hard to make this weekend happen so beautifully. Thank you for your practice, as we heard this morning. This is what we do. This is practice. Specifically, I want to thank, thank a couple of uh, staff members, to Brent, Roger, and May, for enduring my many and just endless questions, helping me get resettled and reacquainted with San Francisco Zen Center. To the Rio Bon, to the Jishas, to the whole Don Rio, thank you. To Abbot David, who somehow managed to make being the master of ceremonies look almost effortless, <laughs> while also being the abiding abbot. <laughs> thank you. To my family, to my mother, for giving me the name she left behind in Japan, for sacrificing everything for the sake of her children's education, for allowing me to take care of her in her final year of life. To my father for his willingness to drive me to the mall whenever I wanted to. <laughs> to endure my yammering for long trips to grandma's house. And for loading his martini with olives that I would plunder. <laughs> and for his terrible dad puns. For Diana for loving him. To my sister Anne for being my role model in more ways than I can count. To my brother, Heinosuke, Jonathan, for being the baby brother that I always wanted and I wish I had more time to spend with. To my niece, Kyoka, for her angel eyes and her Rambo form. To my brother-in-law, Rich, for being my dear friend and fellow philosopher. To Dawn for our very long friendship, our travels, and late nights discussing the Dharma, especially the compare and contrast between traditions. <laughs> to all of my dear Kalyanamitta, my Zen friends, and others, and to all my non-Zen friends, both old and new, for whom all of this must seem very peculiar. <laughs> to the Texans. <laughs> Galen, Choro, you're a Texan now. <laughs> Colin, true Texan. Koji. To the Austin Zen Center Sangha, thank you for supporting me to come here. And with particular thanks to Choro. Where's Choro? For holding the Sangha. I would not come if it were not for you. And for Shu, for sharing his many talents and gifts. And to all of my students for teaching me how to show up. And finally, lastly, for my husband, Joel, for supporting me in so many more ways than uh, that I can uh, enumerate so thoroughly, for letting me drag you here, and for rolling with all the unforeseen consequences of doing so. Thank you. said to me, something like this. And then I leaned over and I kissed him. 
<laughs> and I said, you did what? <laughs> That's when you compare me to Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I reflected some more. <laughs> I thought um, maybe that moment had a significant contribution to the staff being in your right hand. Maybe that moment had a significant contribution to raising your left foot putting it on this step to ascend this mountain seat. Maybe that moment had a significant contribution to the peak of this mountain being so high. Maybe that moment had a significant contribution to um, the white clouds that dance the month peak. Who can say? Maybe. Maybe not. But still, the view from the mountain takes in the big picture. May it always be so. Congratulations. Great congratulations. <laughs>私ももう一度、新三式がしたいなと思いました。それは私が新三式をしたいなと思いました。それは私が新三式をしたいなと思いました。それは私が新三式をしたいなと思いました。それは私が新三式をしたいなと Give her her year, says uh, we, we have a chance to do that. Shin San Chia A H. And Austin Zen Center sends you their warmest, best wishes and love. sibling in the great practice family we share. Amazing how the teaching of interdependence is manifested. It's manifested in how around and around our lives entwine, yours and mine and so many others. <clears throat> to me and I'm sure myriad persons Visiting Tassajara in the summers, starting over 20 years ago, passing through city center on my way there and back, doing practice periods at Tassajara, you were always there. I, and we, saw you year after year, taking up various roles in turn. Work leader, Eno, Penzo, director, priest, Chusseau, practice leader and teacher. I saw this steady practice of supporting <coughs> others and Zen Center's functioning and your warm offering, excuse me, your offering of warm hearted, energetic practice. <coughs> so much energy and dedication. Your deep love of the Dharma expressed through your many gifts of heart and mind. 
and I, at least, marveled at how you were able to step away when it became clear it was time to leave. And to leap into the wide world, straight from Tassajara to San Jose Airport and to Asia with your one-way ticket, traveling for a year. I followed you on your blog, as did many others. And after many adventures, you came to Austin to support the temple founded there by Shumbo Zenke, Blanche Hartman. And our collective karma being what it is, I found my way to Austin, encouraged by your example, which encourages so many, and hoping I could be of service to the Sangha there. You warmly and invited, welcome, warmly invited and welcomed me and offered me a place to practice to express my own vows and to continue my training. And I know that many others experience that kindness and acceptance. You supported me in my Dharma transmission with practical advice and with your presence in the culminating ceremonies. And I married you and Joel. <laughs> I look forward to many years of learning from you and sharing practice responsibility with you. And then you answered a call to come back to Zen Center. Of course you did. Our vows have brought us to our respective positions in the great practice mandala of right now. I know how fortunate Zen Center is to have you especially at this time of major transition. You have the gratitude and best hopes and wishes of us all in taking up your position where you come full circle with rich experience in addition from years away from here. Our heads are on fire, oh Abet. Gambate, we are pulling for you. I stand here as an outsider. I'm probably the only person who isn't part of the practice. Uh, so I'm one of those people they were talking those nonsense people you were talking about who's like, what is going on around here? <laughs> <laughs> but I was asked to speak on behalf of the family and was told that I should come up with an anecdote. <laughs> now, I have a person who knows Maka the longest. Um, and I thought, there's a lot of good things I could say, but I was also told that I shouldn't say anything too embarrassing. <laughs> so I won't, um, I won't say anything too embarrassing. <laughs> but a little bit of context. First, I am five years older. I'm the older sister. Um, and when we were growing up, uh, we were brought up what I call loosely Catholic. We went to church on Sundays, but mostly because this grandmother that she always wanted to go see cowed our father into <laughs> making us go to church. Um, she was a scary woman, our grandmother, and so he made us go to church. At the time, as a preteen, uh, I was fairly religious in a very simplistic way. I believed that there was this old guy in heaven and then if I followed the rules, um, then he would protect me. Um, and it was, back then, it was he. Uh, I think that was God's pronoun back then, I'm not sure. Um, but I was, in that simple way, religious. And, and I thought following the rules was, was pretty important. Maka was six or seven at this time. She was bratty. She stole stuff from me. She sassed our parents. She did not follow the rules. I thought our parents were doing a terrible job in, in raising her to become a morally upright person. So, I stepped in. With my infinite big sister wisdom, I started having Bible study sessions in my house. <laughs> I made Mako come, and I sat her down with all our stuffed animals, hers and mine. And I, wrote, I read to her from a children's Bible I had, stories, and I quizzed her in hopes that somehow you know, I was doing 
what my parents were obviously not doing, and I would save her soul. <laughs> um, at the time, I didn't know at the time that uh, she was already a good person. I didn't need to save her soul. Uh, she was a good person in the way that it mattered. You know, not in this you know superficial, short you know she could steal my stuff and uh, and whatnot, but but uh, in the way that really mattered. And. Mako has what our mother always uh, said, and my, our mother was not one to give out compliments. Uh, I'm not even sure if she told Mako this, but she told me Mako had a good heart. She always said Mako had a good heart. And um, she was right, and I want to give two examples of, of uh, Mako's good heart. First is, I think when she was in college, our grandmother, the scary one, uh, fell and broke both of her wrists, and Mako dropped everything uh, to go and live with her and care for her. She fed her, she bathed her, she drove her to doctor's appointments, uh, and then she did the hardest thing of all, she made her do her physical therapy. Mm. <laughs> I could never have done that. <laughs> but somehow, she was able to get the cantankerous old woman to do her physical therapy. And she was there for, for our grandmother. The second one is um, our mother. Uh, when she was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer, uh, it was Mako first fly, fly back and forth from Austin to Baltimore, just to be there for doctor's appointments because, um, well, my mother needed someone to explain things to the doctor and for, you know, to explain things to my mother, what was going on. That went on for a while. And then Mako uh, and Joel uh, brought her to Austin to stay. And um, this was her last year of life. She and he cared for her, did everything. Uh, it was a very difficult time. Um, as much as I love my mother, she was a very difficult person to live with. Um, and especially at the end of her life, she was angry. I think the cancer was doing something to her mind. Um, and she had paranoia. And she had paranoid accusations that she made about Mako Angel. Um, and yet, through all this, Mako cared for her. In, in that way, she's so much a better person than me. So, I want to congratulate, I guess deep congratulations Deep congratulations. But before I have one more thing, I want to read a statement that our uh, brother, who's in Japan and could not be here, um, Jonathan, or Hanosuke. I'm the only one of our family that didn't take a Japanese name. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, I'm not even sure if I pronounced it Hanosuke correctly. But this is from him. Well, Zen Buddhism is deeply rooted in Japanese culture and an integral part of the society's collective psyche, its true essence is nearly impossible to capture with mere words. This is why Mako's dedication to the practice and her commitment to sharing the vast knowledge and experience she's accumulated is something I truly admire. Our mother also would have been extremely proud to see where Mako's devotion to Zen Buddhism has brought her. With that, Hi, darling. Uh, <laughs> Long before you were invited to become abbot, I was trying to learn Oriyoki forms at the Austin Zen Center. Actually, I'm still trying to learn Oriyoki forms, <laughs> but that's besides the point. But I was there, trying without success to tie the final knot. I was getting proper flustered, and I was letting everyone know about it. 
If I recall correctly, I might have even muttered something about how I had come looking for Taoist sorcery, but so far had only found flower arrangements and pedantic napkin folding. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that upon seeing my frustration, and without saying a single word, he came across the room, sat next to me so that we were facing the same direction, rolled up your sleeves, and then patiently demonstrated the part with which I had been struggling. It was not successful. Um, I'm not the sharpest tack in the box, all thumbs, none of them dead. So. But I share this story here as something that has stuck with me over the years because it captures something of the essence of you as I have experienced it. Coming alongside, facing things together, rolling up your sleeves, and patiently demonstrating. May you always be close enough to your practice to be able to show up like this for others. But as much of an impression that that made on me personally, that is far from the only time that I have been fortunate to see how you look after beings, how you tidy up a space, and the way that you sometimes seem to leave flowers in your wake. In my heart mind, I can still see how tenderly you cared for your mother as her health was declining, and then again after, when we washed her body. I recall all of the times that I've watched you rack your brain to come up with the perfect gift for someone. I so often observe the way that you naturally bring ease to those in distress. And I've watched your face very closely when someone tells you how they hurt. Unflinching, clear-eyed, and compassionate. May we all be so fortunate to encounter that kind of visage amidst our suffering. And yet, not always so, right? Moon-faced Buddha also arises, the lights dim, the curtains fall, the bodies fall apart, the phone call never comes, or worse, it does. Must it really be fall down seven times and stand up eight? Not to be too literal here, but that last fall required reconstructed knee surgery. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in recovery. And yet, somehow, you still say yes. Yes to this way of life, yes to your vows, yes to this practice. Yes to Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and now yes to this mountain. You know, when I asked you if you felt you were ready for all this, you said, how could I be? But then it's not really about me. And even to the, year, even to the ears of this dilettante dabbler, that sounded just about right. Okay. Okay, so it's not about you, or me, or us, or them. It's a lot bigger than that. It's ineffable. It can't be effed. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. All right. I hope it goes without saying that you have my unconditional love and support for, well, all of this. And looking around this room at Buddhas and ancestors gathered here to support you as well, it seems that you're in pretty good hands. And with you on the mountain, I know that San Francisco's ancestors certainly my wish for you today, in the words of Rilke, may you be almond, sulfur closed, and growing sweet. If you need me, I'll be just over there, tending to the kitties, and likely cutting the asparagus too big again. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations.